Hello again, Gooners. Going to be a quick one from me, I'm afraid. Or maybe that's a good thing, because, you know, I do tend to go on a bit. Anyway, what's the news today? Uh, transfer news. <laughs> Arsenal haven't bought anyone. Oh, Kel Supri, you might say in French. But, no, let's continue. I'll give you the agenda briefly. Going to speak about Gareth Barry. About as far as it'll go. Um, Cambrao, what's he got to do with us? You'll find out. Christian Benteng uh, Benteke, even. Pretty good player. Could he be an Arsenal player soon? I'll tell you. Uh, Luis Suarez. Of course, I've spoken about him. I think I began this whole rumour about Luis Suarez. Anyway, a bit more on that. Uh, Higuain, a little bit more on that. Zach Anser. Unfortunate news on his uh, from, from his point of view to report. Uh, Sebastian Perez. Does that sound like an Arsenal name of the future? Perhaps it does. Then um, it's a very interesting story I've got to tell you about Fellaini. Um Quite a lot to say on Fellaini, um, some some updates, let's say, on that. And uh, what about Johan Kabay? I've mentioned him in dispatches before. Could he be an Arsenal player? Doesn't look like it, but I'll give you the latest reason why. And then, um, well, that's it. That's it, really. Uh, I don't think I'm going to read anything because no one's requested it. Unless you request it, I'm not going to bother reading. I'll do enough of that as it is. Right, let's get started. Gareth Barry. There was a meeting today, apparently. It's been rumoured, strongly rumoured, that a meeting took place um, whereby we're discussing the possibility of signing the plan for around about £4 million. Um, whether or not we're going to pay £100,000 per week for him, that remains to be seen. But anyway, Gareth Barry, I think if we'd have signed him before Manchester City signed him, it would have been an excellent bit of business. But right now, I don't personally think we need him. I think we need somebody a bit younger, more dynamic, somebody who's going to completely dominate the midfield. Gareth Barry's a very good player, but he's 32. And is he any better than Mikel Arteta? I'd say not really. I think Arteta's certainly got the edge at the moment. Um, perhaps I wouldn't have said that a few years ago. So no, I wouldn't bother signing him if I were Arsene Wenger. But clearly, if I were Arsene Wenger, I think, well, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but something drastically is wrong when all these other clubs are signing players left right and center compared to us i know the economy is in a bad way but the arsenal economy is in a pretty good state at the moment and it will remain so while we continue to try to get by with a nearly second rate squad but we're stripping the assets and we're not replacing them i just can't understand it meanwhile one player we could have signed apparently is cabral who's now joined sunderland on a free transfer he's 24 apparently Oh, no, I really don't believe this. He reckons he had offers from ourselves, Tottenham and Everton. So he chose Sunderland because he thought he'd get first-team football there. Well, good luck to you, Cabral. Let's see how good you are. He's 24, so he's got plenty of time to prove us wrong. Meanwhile, Christian Benteke, of course, did very well for Aston Villa last season. Uh, he's asked to be put on the transfer list, which has alerted many journalists to the fact that perhaps we might move for him, put a bid in for him. And a lot of the media are saying that perhaps we should make a move for him rather than Higuain. Because uh, in the case of Higuain, there's no, no telling he's going to hit the ground running. Of course, Benteke might be the same. Can't guarantee a player is going to, going to really make it at your club because it's different scenery. But there's more chance because he's, he's got um, a year of, of scoring goals at Aston Villa. So why wouldn't he do that for us when we create more chances? You'd have to say uh, Benteke would probably do a better job for us all other things being equal so let's see what happens on the Benteke front um, wouldn't necessarily surprise me if we did make a bid for him so I can see that one happening uh, the Luis Suarez thing obviously I was the one who stirred this up in the first place um, now there's talk I don't know if this is true or not I really don't know I suspect um, I suspect it may not be a hundred percent true I think I think the media are speculating and the agent is also stirring trouble because obviously Liverpool want to keep Suarez but Suarez is well he's a difficult he's a difficult uh, kind of player to handle and let's think about it how many how many times has Arsene Wenger signed a player that's difficult you know mentally to control I mean I can't think of one not one he normally checks them out Apparently, the latest coming in at the moment is uh, two or three clubs are interested. Ourselves, Chelsea, and not sure who else. He's flattered by our interest. He's actually told his club he wants to leave. So, um, And he also wants Champions League football. Obviously, we, as well as Chelsea, can offer him that. Apparently, according to these reports, he's not actually put in a transfer request as such. So perhaps he won't lose money um, 
after all, if that if if the deal does happen and he does in fact leave. But anyway, the, the story going round is we've bid thirty million pounds, and Liverpool want fifty million. Obviously, the smart money is on a forty million pound deal being being um, thrashed out. But at the moment, the only people doing any thrashing are Chelsea because they're thrashing out deals while we just sort of sit and wait and twiddle our thumbs. Anyway, so Suarez at the moment. I don't personally think he's going to join us, but I think it would be an excellent signing. I'll go. I'll stick my head on the block on that one. I think Suarez would be an unbelievable signing from our point of view, but I don't see it happening. Higuain seems like Real Madrid up in the price, and uh, as Tony Adams said, Higuain no guarantee that he would be the answer to our problems. And Tony Adams interestingly said that um, that with Higuain is. He's a more or less a Real Madrid reject, and if we if that's our aim to just pick up these players that haven't made it at other clubs, then how can we be aiming high enough? He then hastened to add that we need two new full-backs, a centre-back, a goalkeeper. I mean, why did he stop there? Might as well, might as well said the whole team. It felt like, but anyway, I didn't think that was altogether fair. I think Higuain would make a difference, and of course, when you think of Thierry Henry, wasn't he a Juventus reject? Couldn't you say the same about uh, Vieira when Patrick Vieira joined us? He wasn't doing too well at his former club, was he? So I think ultimately when you look at it like that, Higuain, it might just be the change he needs to, to reinvigorate his career by moving to us. I think, I think it would work both for us and for him. So one thing that's not working out at the moment is um, Zach Ansar because he's um, damaged his anterior cruciate um, ligament. He will now be up for six months. It's not a big blow for the club as such because, of course, um, he wasn't expected to be involved in first-team plans, but nonetheless, it is um, damaging for the player, and I hope he makes full recovery. Same goes for Thomas Vermaelen, who's going to miss the pre-season tour of the Far East, including Japan, and um, his back injury uh, will mean he's going to miss the start of the season as well, so bad luck to him, but means, of course, from a media perspective, they are now linking us with more centre-backs, or certainly will be very soon. Um, one player we are not just being linked with, it seems almost confirmed that this player will be having a trial at our club, is a player involved who was involved in the Under-20 World Cup for Colombia. His name is Sebastian Perez, and um, he's an Under-20 Colombian international uh, defensive midfielder. So he's going to be on trial for a week, um, beginning of August. Athletic Nacional, his current club, have confirmed this, so I'm not going to argue with them. And if I if I did argue with them, I'd have to improve my Spanish. That's that goes without saying. Meanwhile, this is a ridiculous story. I've got to say, I read it on the short fuse. Not a bad website actually, but I didn't especially like this story. They said we've already got a Fellaini on our hands, so why do we need to go and buy one? I'll tell you why. Because there is only one Fellaini. Well, anyway, the writer of this article said that Olivier Giroud is the new Fellaini if we want to play him in that position. Well, I don't think we'd want to play him in that position. First of all, if you're a striker, the last thing you'd normally do to a striker is put him back in midfield. Okay, his passing isn't too bad, and yes, he is tall, but that's where that's really where the, um, where, where the sort of similarities begin and end. So, no, I don't think so. We want the real Fellaini, and... It looks like there is a possibility. I'm starting to believe that we might actually sign Fellaini, mainly, or he's certainly going to go somewhere, because Everton are signing players almost like Arsenal of yesteryear. I mean, look how many players they've signed. They've signed Joel Robles, a goalkeeper, um, something we would like to sign, but haven't managed to do it yet, despite Chelsea. They've actually gone and signed Schwartz, our old transfer target, on a one-year deal just to rub salt in the wound. They've also signed Antolin Alcarez and Aruna Kone. So Aruna Kone we know about. So that's three players have brought in. How are they going to finance all that? They're not a rich club. So I can see they're going to sell somebody. Uh, Leighton Baines could be on the way to Manchester United, people are saying, but no, I'm saying Fellaini's going to join us. Well, maybe I'm just being optimistic in just really putting two and two together and and making four, which is which is something, or, you know, making money that could be spent even. 40 million, could it be? 20 and 20? I don't know, I'm getting lost in that. 
all this maths is confusing me. But one player we could have signed, of course, it seemed like back in the day, was Johan Kabay. Well, guess what? It looks like he's going Paris and Paris Saint Germain now instead, and that's gonna that's gonna be a hefty hefty bill for Paris Saint Germain, I think. So if Paris Saint Germain are interested, kind of blows us out of the water. So if we are genuinely interested in Kabay, which I don't think we are, we won't be getting him anyway. John Ruddy, I don't know if he's been linked with us very much lately, but Chelsea put a bid in for him around about six million pounds, was rejected. Now, of course, they've signed um, Schwarzer, so perhaps they won't be going back for Ruddy. So perhaps that's a possibility. Who knows? Would we be likely to sign John Ruddy? Would it be a good signing? I'd have to say no on both counts, but if you've got an opinion, do let me know and you know where to do it. Right down below this video, you know the place. And um, that's, all, that's all I'm going to say this time around. So until the next time, I will say away and up the Gooners.